I am with the one, the only, Cito Gaston, now former manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. It's still kind of weird to say that, but it is so true. And uh, you know what, Cito, you had such a fantastic coaching career. Have you had a chance to look back on it and maybe smile a bit? Well, yeah, I, I have. And uh, I think the last day I was in Minnesota, uh, riding to the airport with one of my coaches, I uh, just kind of sit there and kind of thought back on it mm. over the the year, especially last year. I think we had a great year last year. I, I mean, you can go back to the World Series years, and there were great years. And the first year I managed when we were 12 and 14, 12 and 24, and came back and won. Uh, so, you know, you do think about all those different years, but also all the players that you had. You're fortunate enough to have some great players to play for you and uh, guys who wanted to win. And uh, uh, those 92 and 93 teams, those guys wanted to win. Also, I tell you, before then, in 85, when Bobby mm -hmm. Cox, we had guys who wanted to win too. We just came up a little short at times. There comes a time when uh, you enter a, a new phase in the life of a franchise, that winning phase. By all appearances, the Blue Jays are entering a, a rebirth, if you will, maybe getting back to the promised land. Yet here you are winding a career down. Um, were you just trying to facilitate the, uh, sort of the, the next wave for the new manager? Or was this, hey, you know, whether this team competes or not, it's time for Cito to uh, maybe put his feet up? Well, it, I was trying to get it back to where it was before. And, and it's, it's time for Cito to put his mm -hmm. feet up, too. So both of those things are right. Uh, but it's time for someone to come in that's younger. I think if I was five or six years younger, I'd probably try to stick around if they didn't mm -hmm. run me off. But <laughs> it's, uh, I think the team's headed in the right direction. The organization's headed in the right direct directions. Uh, Paul Beeston's back there running things along with Alex Anthopoulos, who's doing a great job. And I just think they're going to get better. They've just got to keep going out, scouting. Uh, we put a lot of scouts in, a, in our organization now that uh, we can go out and certainly scout guys and get some good draft picks and, and perhaps get back to where we were before. Will Cito Gaston be kind of lurking perhaps and maybe even front and center helping whoever needs help? Well, I will be there. I will be there and I will probably come out uh, once or twice a week, try to stay out of the mm -hmm. way and uh, when needed, I'll be there. Is that going to be possible? I mean, you've just uh, sort of reinvigorated your career, and, and a lot of people would have said that uh, Cito Gaston would have been perfect to manage this team back to the playoffs. How is that going to be a transition for you? Will it be difficult to keep your hands off when you've been so hands-on from for the last few years? Well, I think it's difficult when you're around a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I plan on being around a lot in Toronto, watching them play every game, at every home game. But in spring training, I'll stay away as, uh, quite a bit. I maybe come around a couple of days a week, as I said. But uh, no, it's it's not going to be difficult to me. You know, I did. I had some practice on practices with this before I was retired. Before, uh, never officially retired from being in the Blue Jays organization, but from coaching and managing. So it should be okay with me. I I, I think, you know, I, I not think I want to spend more time with my grandkids and more time with my wife, and do some things I want to do. How does the team you left behind reach the playoffs for the first time since 1993? Some fantastic hitters, great pitching staff, mm -hmm. probably uh, top 10 in the league, mm -hmm. but there are still some things this team needs to do. Uh, if you and Alex Anthopoulos were sitting around talking about some of the things you need to augment this franchise, what would they be? Well, I, I really believe that we head in the right direction. If you look at the starting staff that they're gonna have this year, it should be a good starting mm -hmm. staff. Some young kids that are coming along real well. Uh, as you said, there's some great hitters on that ball club. I think where we need some help, and hopefully the young kids will step up in the bullpen. You know, last year we had uh, Percy who stepped up and really became a, a pitcher out of that bullpen. And, you know, I'm not sure what Zepp is going to pitch this year, Zepp Jensky, if he's going to come out of the pen or pitch as a starter. And also Jason Frazier, you know, we have him back. So if the guys step up in the bullpen and pitch well in relief and give those guys a couple of good innings at the end of the ball, at the end of the ball game, then uh, it, should, it should turn out fine. We should have a great year this year. You were a hitter, an all-star, a 300 hitter. John Farrell, uh, a pitcher, comes from the Boston Red Sox organization. Do you sense a shift in philosophy then, maybe from the offensive game to the defensive one with John Farrell taking over? Well, I, I think uh, it will maybe shift a little bit because he is a pitcher. Mm -hmm. But he will also realize that, uh, you know, you have to have both. Mm -hmm. And I know when I first took over as a manager, I was a hitting coach. And so I kind of lean more toward the hitters. But as you go, you have to have both of them. So you, you have to learn to deal with both sides, uh, pitching and hitting, and certainly uh, understanding where they're coming from, whether they're hitters or pitchers. And I think John will do that. You've heard of the old Twitter, huh? The players uh, tweeting nowadays. I have two Twitter questions for you. Okay. Uh, 
Hank Aaron's influence on you. I know uh, a friend, uh, a guy who uh, had some fantastic words for you at your big retirement yeah. ceremony at Rogers Center. Uh, just uh, his influence on you and what he means to your life. He means a, a lot to me. Uh, Hank and I were roommates. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hank took care of me, he even taught me how to tie a tie. <laughs> he also taught me to stand on my own two feet. He taught me that, uh, you know, whatever you do today, uh, don't carry it into the next day. And he also got me back in the game. He called me three times when he was the farm director for the Atlanta Braves. And the first two times I said no. And every time he called me, he said, come and work with me, you know. And uh, I thank him for that to, to, to this day. Uh, I still need to give him a call. Yeah. I know he told me that I should call him more, but he's so busy sometimes it's hard to catch up with him. But he's in my heart every day, and I really appreciate what he did for me, getting me back in the game, and what he taught me about the game. The one thing I'm disappointed in myself is I never talked to him about hitting until I started to work with him, and I didn't know that he loved to talk about hitting. And I just figured that, okay, if I start bugging this guy, they're gonna run, he's, he's going to run me out of the room. And how often... Or are you able to actually room with your childhood idol and grow up and, and, and play with him? So I was just kind of keep keeping quiet, but I wish I had to talk more hidden to, with him. Oh, what a fantastic story, Cito. Uh, real quick, uh, what do you think of player tweets? You know, there was a time when everything stayed in the clubhouse. Now yeah. the young cats, they're out there, they're on their Blackberries, they're on their iPhones, they're talking to their fans now. Do you like that? And perhaps maybe it goes a little overboard because, hey, what's, what happens in the room stays in the room sometimes? Well, it should stay in the room, and, and guys should uh, pretty much know that, even though it doesn't happen all the time. But I think most, most of the guys will leave it in the room. But it, it's really tough to uh, bring someone up from AAA uh, without them knowing it because somebody hears it in the clubhouse, yeah. and before you can get to the person that you're bringing up from, say, from Vegas, uh, they know it. That's the only tough thing about it. But, you know, I, I'm happy to see these guys communicate with their fans uh, because without the fans, we have nothing. I could see some policies perhaps changing, whereas coaches or managers say, if I see a tweet, you're going to be fine. Uh, Cito, uh, your association with Toronto is an absolute thing of beauty and legend. Two World Series, uh, winningest manager of all time, spawning fantastic players like recently inducted Robbie Alomar. Uh, I want to thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I hope your association with Toronto, Canada, and the City of London uh, is a fruitful one. And enjoy yourself tonight.